So my name is Shay, I'm from um, the Evans Group, and I'm going to tell you my project, which look at the genomic architecture of sex bias as gene expression in Seneca's four hours. So you must all have seen the fancy pink cocktail, which is, oops, you must all have seen the fancy pink cocktail, which is uh, present in male, but not in female. For male, the pink cocktail is beneficial for its fitness since it increases its overall reproductive success. However, it could be harmful for the female's fitness to have it since it doesn't offer any reproduction um, benefits and is heavy and attracts predators easily. The pink cocktail is an example of sexual antagonism where a trait or a gene allele is beneficial for one sex but not for the other. However, with the nearly identical genome that's shared between male and female, female must also have the gene that is re uh, re responsible for a child development as well. And one solution to um, resolve this sexual conflict is to have different expression level of those genes in females so that the child development in female can be suppressed. Hence, sex bias gene expressions represent the resolutions of past sexual antagonisms. In an inferential paper by Rice in 1984, it was predicted that sexually antagonistic allele are more common on the sex chromosomes than the allosome. And why that could be the case, we have to go back and look at how sex chromosomes evolve. So sex chromosomes are predicted to evolve from a pair of identical allosomes with the acquisitions of um, a master regulator of sex. And when this master regulator is in, pro in close proximity with the gene that have sex specific benefits, recombination around those genes will be suppressed in order to, inherit, uh, in, in, to ensure those genes can be inherited in a sex specific manner. And over time, this region is predicted to expand and accumulate more mutations and more genes with sex-specific benefits, such as sexually antagonist uh, alleles. And with sex bias gene expression represent a resolution of past sexual antagonisms. Our objective of the study is to test um, the expectation that a newly evolved sex chromosome would have a higher proportion of genes with sex bias expressions than the allosome. And African frog species called for, uh, Sanofis borealis give us a great model to look at that. So Sanofis borealis is an L tetrapod, which means I have an L subgenome and an S subgenome as a result of um, whole genome dupli uh, duplication events. And those two subgenomes are from two an different ancestral species. The same happens in this close related relative labels too. In the past two decades, we have known quite a bit about Sanofis sex chromosomes. In the clay, in the Sanofis clay that I highlight in red here, we know that there is a sex determination gene DMW. However, DMW is lost in borealis, indicating that borealis must have a new master regulator genes of sex or a new sex determination system. And we Neither know that the borealis have as sex chromosomes as AL, which evolved in the past 25 million years. And this makes it a relatively new sex chromosome. Additionally, we also know that on the sex chromosome AL, there's a portion of um, the sex chromosome that's not recombining, highlighted in purple here. And this plot here shows you how we know this part is not combining. So on the X axis here, you, it's showing the chromosome positions on AL. And on the Y axis here, it's showing you the frequency of a mother's genotypes being present in the daughter or in the son, which is the blue dot and the red dot here, respectively. And in the first uh, 57 million base pair, you can see that the mother's genotype is present in almost all the daughter, but none of the sons. If the chromosome is recombining, you will see the mother's genotype will be present in roughly half of the 
daughter and half of the sons, which is what you see there with the mixed orange and blue dot. So with um, Gorilla's new sex chromosomes and with its uh, large regions of uh, recombination suppression, we can not now test our uh, expectation that by checking whether this non commanding regions accumulate higher proportion of sex bias genes compared to the recombining regions. And from now on, I'm going to refer to the non commanding region as the sex link region and the recombining region as the, as the non sex link region. So, so to start off, we extract RNA from a Briarless family, which consists of four male and four female. And we extract RNA from two different tissue types, the liver and also the gonad tissues. We send them for sequencing, and with all the sequencing reads, we build a single transcriptome. And then we perform differential expression analysis between male and females for the two different tissue types separately. So this analysis would tell us whether a uh, Borrell's gene is sex bias or not. So if a gene is female sex bias, it means that it have higher expression level in female compared to male. Additionally, we also want to know where those genes are located in the genome. Unfortunately, we don't have a well annotated Borrell's genome, but we do have a high quality genome from a closely related species, Sanofis Davis. So we can use it as a reference genome. So we map the Borrell's transcript to the Davis genome to find out the genomic location of the Borrell's genes. At this stage, we know whether a gene is sex bias and also we know as genomic locations. So we can go ahead to look at the distribution of those sex bias genes in the genome. The plot I'm showing you here are for the liver tissues. And on the S, as see here is showing the chromosomes, and I have divided the sex chromosome AL into the sex link region and the non sex ring region in red and in pink, respectively. And on the Y as see here, I'm showing you the proportion of genes uh, being sex bias in that region or in the chromosomes. The air bar here are showing a 95% confidence interval. And you can see that the red dot, which re represents the sex link region of the sex chromosomes, have a higher proportion of sex bias genes compared to the non sex link regions. And it also have a higher proportion compared to the rest of the genome. We perform a binomial test to compare the sex link regions and the entire genome. And we got a p value of 0 0.05, which indicates um, the difference is significant. Here is the same plot, but for the gonad tissues. And it's, seen, it's showing the, a slightly different picture, but the same pattern, where the sex link region of the sex chromosome is higher, have a higher proportion of sex bias gene compared to the non sex link regions, and is also higher compared to other autosomes. However, it may also wonder whether this pattern could be pre-existing uh, pre before AL becomes a sex chromosome. And to look at that, uh, we can look at AL in the close related species and the Labus. Because in Labus, a sex chromosome is 2L, and AL is just an allosome. So we can do the same analysis with Labus and see if we uh, observe the same pattern that we see in Borealis. So um, we did differential expression analysis with RNA-seq data from um, three male and three female labus uh, liver tissues. And the latest results show us that as AL sex language does not accumulate more sex bias gene compared to the net to the sex language. And it's also not higher uh, compared to the allosomes. So this suggests to us that the AL sex link region is not accumulating more sex genes before it becomes a sex chromosome. So with that, um, our results 
show us that uh, there's an enrichment of genes with sex bias expression patterns on the sesame portion of the loose sesame chromosome. And this suggests to us in fraud recombination suppression on sex chromosome may help resolve sexual antagonism by providing a genomic mechanism for the evolution of um, sex bias gene expression. And moving forward, we also want to explore the directionality of evolution of sex bias gene expression. We are currently examining the evolution of male to female expression ratio in the final genetic, genetic content using Brownian motion model. By using a uh, comparative approach, this will allow us to assess whether sex bias expression arose due to upregulation in females or in males. And with that, uh, I want to thank uh, all the people who support me throughout this project, which includes uh, my supervisor, Ben Evans, my um, supervising committee, Ian Dorkins, and also past and current Evans lab member, um, Dr. Ben Ferment, um, Caroline, and also um, Dr. Brian Gordon for communication support. And I will be happy to take any questions. Um, we haven't looked at that specific yet, because uh, that will be uh, our next step as well, because um, there's another study that we're also doing that we trying to determine which one is the sex determination genes, and both will be looked at together with the uh, uh, sex determination genes study that we're going to do. Yes. So, in the non-recombining region, Yes. Um, sex bias expression can also evolve if there's degeneration of the W chromosome. Right. And I'm wondering, and, and incomplete dosage compensation, right? I'm wondering if you considered that. Uh, we do have a separate study that looked at that. The preliminary results show there's no degeneration or dosage compensation, but that's like something that's is still preliminary. So, yeah. I, I will guess there's no, but because that's what we see now, but we need to finalize it, yeah. Any other questions?